Welcome back to Northwest City Politics in the Know with Juanita. We're glad that you're joining our show again this week. We're very happy there are people like you out there, people that are interested in what's happening in the cities in our area. Because it is important for good government that city councils, city staff, and city residents are all in communication with each other. So we're glad that you're choosing to watch. And if you haven't watched us before, each week we'll have somebody on from one of the nine cities in Northwest Community Television's viewing area to update us on what's happening in the city. Then, if there's an issue that kind of resonates with you, we hope that you'll copy down emails and phone numbers and be in contact with your city councils or your mayors to let them know what you like or don't like about items. And then I was reminded tonight that be sure, besides talking about areas that you're not quite happy about, be sure when something goes well in your city that you take the time to let your mayor and city council people know to have Mayor Kelly Slavik on our show again. Thank you. Yeah, we've had you on before, but it's been a little while. Sure. So time for a Plymouth update. Absolutely. <laughs> now, you know, because you've been on our show before, that I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself out to our wider audience, because there's people in Plymouth who, who will certainly know who you are, sure. but some others might not know. Absolutely, sure. So I'm, my name is Kelly Slavik, and I have been mayor. I'm in my 10th year as mayor now. Mm -hmm. Prior to becoming mayor, I served on the city council for eight oh. years, and so I've been had a lot of experience in oh, Plymouth, yes, and yes. I love being mayor. Mm -hmm. It's been a really good fit for me personally and professionally. Uh -huh. it's, I've kind of raised my family up uh -huh. around me being involved in oh, politics, right, and it's right. really been a positive experience for all of us. Mm -hmm. So um, I have great staff to work with. The residents in Plymouth are very engaged, and they like to be a part of the community and contribute to the community, which makes my job much easier. So. Yeah, because you have a lot of volunteers and actually have a volunteer coordinator in your city, don't you? We do. Right. We do. So people want to be engaged and involved and have a say in how government mm -hmm. works and that's one of the reasons I ran in the first place uh -huh. is I thought we should have more public input so right. I'm very pleased to have that opportunity right. to work with our residents. Yes. Moving <laughs> to your uh, Northwest Greenway. Sure. Now maybe to start out by what a little history on what brought it to fruition and what it is because I'm sure there's people sure. out there not familiar with FEMA with mm -hmm. Plymouth to Right. Well, the Northwest Greenway is really, the, of course, the northwest corner of Plymouth. Right, right. And it was, at one time, there was a lot of farms and vacant mm -hmm. land there. And we, Plymouth, realized um, decades ago that that land would get developed at some point when we sure. had willing sellers and willing buyers and, and, you know, the development just continued out north and west. And so we thought it was important to set aside land to have available for parks and open right, space and for right. everybody to enjoy as everything got mm -hmm. built up. And so um, throughout this process, and since I've been on the city council, mm -hmm. we've really looked for opportunities uh, when something is developed to, to acquire some of that land mm -hmm. or to get it through a park dedication. And so what we have now is about 350 acres of uh -huh. open space. And what we plan to do there is to um, develop a kind of a looping trail system, oh. but really have it serve as a big connection from um, the was at a high school okay. and the play fields all the way out to Camelot Park and the Medicine oh. Lake Regional Trails oh, yeah. and provide um, three different trail systems in there and do some trailheads and really provide some unique opportunities for people to really enjoy that part of our community. It's very beautiful and it's nice to see it not um, all developed. Oh, so 350 right, right. acres is a lot of land oh, to be yes. set aside and it, it, I, there'll be you know generations of people in our community and beyond that right. will be able to enjoy this. So. Now, have you started building the trails or what, what stage is this in? Sure, well, we're still in the process of acquiring land, but um, in 2015, the trail section of east of Vicksburg Lane okay. was constructed um, and it runs from roughly Terrace View Lane to Legacy Park. And in 2016, we're con going to continue to build on our trail system, mm -hmm. including a pedestrian bridge, ah. bridge over Vicksburg. Ah. And so we'll, we expect that by the end of 2016, we'll, 2016, we'll have uh, most of the east-west connections okay. made. But we're, like I said, we're still acquiring land, right. so we'll, right. we're still kind of trying to piece it all together. The majority of the land is acquired but um, we really hope to see it um, continue to develop. And we're getting community input too from, ah. as people 
what they want to oh, see right, there and how right. they want to recreate there. So it's it's a beautiful area, and there's some challenges because there's mm -hmm. some wetlands and you know and mm -hmm. roads, and we have to try to make it all right. fit together. But but I think it's it's really a good opportunity to um, keep that land open for everybody to enjoy. Yeah, and it takes people a period of time. It takes somebody back in time who saw the need for parkland. Yes. Right? Oh, definitely. Because yeah. it, it's easy to let that slide by unless you've got people that are uh, focused on it and can focus city councils on it. Right? That's, that's right. In the city council, we had, we've had some great visionaries yeah. along yeah. the way with our past, um, Eric Blank, our past mm -hmm. Park and Rec director, and our current, Diane Evans, our current Park and mm -hmm. Rec director, have really made that a focal point and, and really bring up many opportunities to the city council for us to expand on that and talk about it and, mm -hmm. and really try to meet the needs of future generations of Plymouth. Well, and, and what people do for recreation has been gradually changing over time too. Yes, it has, it has. We've, and, and there's, such, there's such a wide range too of what mm -hmm. people, you know, I think a lot of time there was just a lot of walkers, runners, bikers, right, and right. now, you know, we're starting to see people be more engaged and have more organized uh -huh. activities and just making sure that we have space available for all of that is, is very important and right. we want to make sure that um, you know if you're choosing to live in Plymouth you have many opportunities right. to recreate that's something that's been very important mm -hmm. to me to provide. Uh, Plymouth is one of the cities that has their own bus service yes in contrast to having the my mind's blanking out Metro Transit, right? Yep, Metro okay, Transit. Okay, instead of yep. having Metro Transit, you have Plymouth Transit, right? Yep. And Metro Link. Plymouth Metro, Metro Link. Pet, Plymouth Metro Link. Yep. And generally, bus transit service in the suburbs has been from the suburb down to downtown Minneapolis or back again. Right. Now, there's an experimental project getting started. I think it just started in January, yes. right? Yep. Why don't you tell us about what's happening along 494 and what people can try out and well sure. encourage them to do so right yes <laughs> yes well we, it's suburb to suburb transit okay. and it really goes along the 494 mm -hmm. corridor and it was we um, were part of as an opt-out community with mm -hmm. other communities we were part of the uh, suburban transit association okay. and they lobbied the state legislature for to get this service in place oh. and it's kind of an experimental two-year program mm -hmm. that's what we have funding for and it um, really will provide um, opportunities to get people um, not to and from downtown but to and from the suburbs mm -hmm. along 494 so um, yeah it just started in 19th uh, January 19th and we wanted uh -huh. really people to have a reliable way to get back and forth right. and so it starts kind of starts in Maple Grove it runs through Plymouth okay. and it runs through um, Southwest Transit Service area which mm -hmm. includes Minnetonka, Needham Prairie mm -hmm. all the way down to the Minnesota Valley Transit uh -huh. Authorities Service area so that whole 494 corridor um, will be served by this. And then is the would it be primarily for jobs and employees or what do you, what do they think? What are we, they projecting? Yeah, we think it will be for jobs. Uh -huh. I mean, there certainly could be opportunities um, with um, the buses coming every half half hour. That we're you know there could be okay. opportunities if you wanted to go to Maple Grove for a little while and and I don't know why you would leave Plymouth, but maybe <laughs> to shop or go to a restaurant we don't happen to have. Right, right. But um, mm -hmm. there's that opportunity, okay. and you can get back to Plymouth as well because it'll just kind of keep looping around. So, but we really do, we're working with employers to let them okay. know that the service is available. Each community is kind of reaching out to uh -huh. their employers and letting them know about the service. And so we're really hoping that um, not everybody works downtown. We right. All of us right. along 494 have many jobs in our community. So using that as a resource for people to get to and from work. So it, it's something that you, it needs to build the service. Right. That, it's, yep. It starts out slow, and uh -huh. I think we're, we're doing our best to communicate it and get the information out there. But, you know, people get in their habits, whether they have, whether they're in their car or a lot of people bike to work or are oh, close right. enough to right. walk to work or carpool or ride share mm -hmm. with somebody. So um, we're really hoping to change people's habits and to get them used to trying out another service. They might not need it all the time, but right. even if, the, you know, once in a while, if they needed, a, you know, to use it here and there, it's available to them. So where can they find out about it? Well, there is a website um, available, and it is www.s2s494.com. Okay, I'll get that up and put it on the, Great. On our, on the program so people can Good. see that. Yep. Because 
in order to get people to use it, you've got to get them to know that it's there. Right? That's right. So yeah. what kinds of outreach are you doing? Right now we're working with our, we've been used, putting it out on social media. We've okay. done some press releases. So it's been in the newspaper. It's been in our newsletter. And um, we're getting it out on the city's um, Facebook account and Twitter account and on our website. And we're going to start reaching out to employers to oh, let them know sure. um, that it's available. And we'll do that, you know, one-on-one -on -one and um, phone calls and emails and things like that. So each of the cities provides some of the bus service sets there. Yes. But it goes the whole length. Right. Yep. From what, Shakopee to Maple Grove. Yes. Now you're having a public works facility. You're expand expanding it. Mm -hmm. What are the current needs in your public works area? What's leading to this expansion? Probably, well, Plymouth has grown quite a bit mm -hmm. over the last decade. And so really one of the one of the key issues with our public um, works facility is that there isn't enough storage space. Wow. We're having to store a lot of equipment mm -hmm. outside. And so having a place to keep that all under one roof has always been important to us. And so we'll have, um, be able to bring that storage inside. And also we need more space for employees. As we're growing, uh. we're, we've, we haven't added too many employees, mm -hmm. but we, we're probably expanding their duties a little bit more, so we really need some additional training and meeting space oh, for right, them. Right. So this expansion will provide that as well. Um, and so we really hope to see, as our city builds out fully in the next five or ten years, that the expansion will meet the needs of our city well into the future. So where is this going to take place? At our existing maintenance facility, just off of um, Niagara. Okay. And um, it'll we'll add about one third of the space, we'll add additional space. And we have been very fortunate that we've seen the need for this and we've set aside money uh -huh. and we'll be able to pay cash <laughs> right. for this large wow. expansion. That's and pretty good. It is good. And we expect to start construction um, this summer if we get a favorable uh -huh. bidding climate. But it's really something that we've been monitoring and looking for ways uh -huh. to create efficiencies and just provide more space uh, oh, right. for our employees. Unfortunately, when um, we we haven't had a lot of snow, but we do often have, <laughs> the, with the shifts that people work oh, and right. long hours and needing rest, sometimes we they are ending up staying overnight at our maintenance oh, facility yeah. instead of I, getting I back home. And so that. any kind of additional space is, is Would help. Yes, greatly needed. And hope, hopefully we won't have that situation happen often, right. especially this season and beyond, but um, just making sure that we can provide that mm -hmm. space if it's necessary. So the plans are all drawn up now? Yep. Yep, the city council approved the plans and um, talked about you know how we're going to pay for it, and we have it out for bids now. And then the so the process has does it have a timeline for when you hope that it'll be completed or when they would? It'll probably. Um, how long does that bidding process take? Um, the bidding we hope to have um, the bids um, see, uh, reviewed and. Um, a, a construction company chosen by summer and uh -huh. start construction then and it'll be a one to two year project. Uh, you've had a lot of road construction we going have. on <laughs> in lots of different areas so I thought we'll touch on each of these sure. to let people know whether it's done, whether it's in the middle, mm -hmm. and what's, what's being accomplished. One yeah. was Vicksburg so I'll just sure. turn Turn it over for you to talk about what's happening on there. Okay, we do. From what area to what area? Sure. We do, uh, unfortunately, have a couple of road projects that are so large they have to expand through right. two construction seasons. Right. One of them is Vicksburg. Um, and we did the, um, this past year in 2015, we just, in November, we wrapped up the first phase of uh -huh. construction. That was from Old Rockford Road to Schmidt Lake okay. Road, kind of the southerly section of mm -hmm. Vicksburg Lane. So that was expanded from two lanes to four lanes. Uh -huh. And starting this uh, spring in 2016, we'll work on the northern section, which will go to the Maple Grove border. Uh -huh. And we'll also include a bridge over the railroad tracks, uh -huh. which <laughs> is badly needed. Uh -huh. um, and we're, we're, we did receive some state bonding funds mm -hmm. to build that bridge um, for rail safety purposes. And so um, that will be a, a major construction project this summer. And we will close the have that section of Vicksburg uh -huh. closed. But um, fortunately, we do have some alternate routes okay. um, that, that people can take. It's that's right. Good to highlight people. Yep. And one of them is <coughs> Peony Lane in Plymouth. Okay. That was completed last year. Ah. And so that's a good um, alternate right. to use um, north-south to get across Plymouth.
Yeah, because I think we talked about Vicksburg one time when we were on the, that it was where you <coughs> went over the railroad tracks, you almost were in the air, right? Yes, that's right. <laughs> yes, the, and the, you can tell that the cars do get airborne. Wow. The pavement wow. is very scuffed up yeah. there. So, um, and you know, it created great delays oh, in the community. Right, and right. we're uh, our biggest worry was probably public safety yeah. access and yeah. being when you have to have an ambulance or fire truck or mm -hmm. police car stopped for a train to get through, right. it wastes precious seconds. So having the ability to have a bridge over the tracks will benefit our oh, entire community. especially with a major road like Vicksburg. Absolutely, and um, having um, a high school nearby where we uh -huh. have a lot of young oh, drivers, yeah, inexperienced yeah. drivers yeah, using true, that true. Uh, roadway segment. So I think it'll make it for a much uh -huh. safer roadway for everybody. And then, uh, oh, Peony Lane. Why don't you tell people where it's at and what happened to it? Because it is completed. Sure, it is completed. But it was completed just this past fall of right. 2015, and it extends to the Maple Grove, Grove border uh -huh. and really starts at kind of 101 by the okay. Wise Out of High School. And um, it really was intended to build that growing segment in that area and to provide an alternate to Vicksburg, mm -hmm. that other north-south connection that can get you to Maple Grove. So it's been in plans for a long time, but then the area needed to kind of grow up around it? It did. Um, and, you know, we the road was very curvy, not so safe, and we kind of straightened it out, made wow. it wider. It's a much safer roadway, and I think when people drive it, they'll be pleasantly surprised mm -hmm. at how much better it functions as a right. roadway after the construction. And it's always good when you get a con project done. It <laughs> is. And it it's is. completed. <laughs> and Interstate 494, we dealt with all last summer. Oh, yes. <laughs> so tell us about what got completed and what's left to be done and what's, what to expect on this uh, season, this construction. Sure. Well, we're kind of at the halfway point of okay. the project. MnDOT is um, continuing to work on it. Um, what was completed was the southbound 494 okay. between East Fish Lake Road and Highway 55. Mm -hmm. That is complete and all open, all three lanes. So this next construction season in 2016, it'll be the southbound lanes between East mm -hmm. Fish Lake Road and Highway 55. And that took quite a while in working through the legislature to get the Department of Education and the funding and everything together. Because I remember at one point there was a little controversy about whether they were going to do three lanes, right? Yes, there was. In fact, yeah. it's been my entire time on the, uh -huh. on city government, especially over the last decade, though, I, we've uh -huh. really pushed to get that segment completed. Um, it was always expected that there would be a three-lane continuum all along the 494 corridor, but as they were building out, funds ran short, and it kind of when it got to Plymouth, right. they, we were out of money. So right. <laughs> we, you know, other the Department of Transportation looked at doing um, alternatives to building that third lane, whether it was a min pass lane or a dynamic right. shoulder, right. which we did not want. We wanted I consistency. Yeah. So uh -huh. we were very fortunate uh -huh. to be able to get that third lane, um, general purpose lane built, and so. Um, we knew it would be painful through, you know, because it right. really entailed three construction seasons oh, right. where we've been through two and we're, we'll right. be coming upon the final one. But I think the, the end product is that we're able to get um, people through safer, oh, right. quicker, and employers and goods and services in and out of Plymouth better. And just making that consistency, losing that bottleneck, oh, right. it's made such a big difference um, to anybody using that lane. And, using that roadway and I think it's so much safer as well. Mm -hmm. So will they be shifting the lanes around like they have been? Because it's kind of interesting if you saw it when right, it was yeah. happening. <laughs> that was a big, yeah. people really like to yeah, see kinda, hmm. see how that was happening right, and how they right. made that work. They will be doing some okay. lane shifting like that okay. again because they will have to close uh -huh. segments of the roadway at certain points. And I think, I believe the Department of Transportation, MnDOT, has put uh, a lot of that information on their website. Oh, so once okay. construction gets up and going ah. again, they'll provide regular updates. And I know you can subscribe to that because when oh. there are lane closures, I know there was many Sunday evenings oh, I'm coming right. home from the cabin yeah. and the, the road's closed. Oh, no. And so um, pr getting that information out to people oh, I think is definitely. vital. And so once they start um, closing roads and limiting access uh, via on-ramps and off-ramps, they will start doing a good job of communicating that out. So they can just do min.com? Yep. Yeah, but if you go to the state's website, the right. Department of Transportation, there'll they'll be um, alerts that you oh, can subscribe Oh, sure. For. So if, if you drive that road every day, it might yep. be wise to Absolutely. <laughs> find out when. Yes, for sure. <laughs> but it's coming. It is. It is. One more construction season right, and right. we'll be done. <laughs> 
Yeah, because we live off of 169, and so traffic from 100 is there, 494. Oh, yeah, no, and so everybody's going to be happy when the construction is done yeah. over that area. Yes, they will be. And then you've, uh, Cheshire, Cheshire? Cheshire. Shire, make sure I say it right. Yep. Uh, is part of that Trillium uh, Trillium project. Yep. Maybe you can talk about what happened in roads there. Sure. Well, that was a new road that was constructed from Schmidt Lake Road to County Road 47, okay. and there was an overpass over the Canadian Pacific Railroad uh, over the tracks ah. there, so that made it easier um, to navigate oh, that part yes, of the city too, yes. and just providing an, yet another connection as that part of the city continues to grow mm -hmm. to make sure that there was access available for everybody. Now, and that's the area of your city that has more open land ready for housing. Yes, yep, still we're seeing lots of new development mm -hmm. proposals come forward and um, continuing to see once they're constructed they're mm -hmm. selling very quickly and um, we're still looking at proposals all the time. I think last year we had over 300 new housing units, single-family mm. homes built up in yeah, that northwest area. Good. It is good. It's, right. it's We're kind of one of the leaders in mm -hmm. the metro area. So um, there definitely is um, great demand there, mm -hmm. and I think they're as fast as they can seem to get them <laughs> built, they're being sold. So right. it's um, we're, we appreciate the growth that we're right. seeing in Plymouth. Yeah, and it is important in busy areas to get those railroad overpasses. It is. In fact, they talk about how many are needed across the state, so you're right. fortunate to get somewhere you need them. Right. I had the opportunity to meet with Governor Dayton in um, last fall and really uh -huh. before we received the bond funds right. just to let him know what an important segment uh, that was and what it meant to Plymouth right. and I, I appreciate that opportunity and he really seemed uh -huh. to listen and, uh -huh. and be engaged and involved in it uh -huh. and offered to come out and take a look at uh -huh. it before we could have him out we we received the bond funds uh -huh. so we'll still take him out anytime <laughs> right. he wants right. to come take a look right. at it maybe if we're a ribbon cutting on the right. bridge but right. um, it was I think you know yes statewide they are seeing oh, as right. more and more rail is being mm -hmm. utilized right. you're seeing longer trains and faster trains coming through communities and really the focus has been on safety whether mm -hmm. it's train derailments which fortunately we haven't right, seen no. in Plymouth in quite a number of years and decades but also just um, making sure that people can a get access oh, right. and especially public right. safety vehicles as I mentioned before so really making sure that that access is there and the safety component mm -hmm. as well is because we're starting to see more um, combustible cargo oh, on those trains right, as well. Right. Yeah, a lot of Right now, not quite as much, but lots of oil yes. trains coming through. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. I thought we'd take a little time, and we touched it briefly, that you have a volunteer coordinator. Yes. But you also have um, various commissions that people out in the audience that live in Plymouth might be interested when the time is right for them. Because sometimes you have the time to do volunteer things, sometimes not. But we want to keep encouraging people to let them know what are the commissions that are possible to be appointed to in Plymouth? Sure. We have our Planning Commission, our okay. Environmental Quality Commission, our Housing and Redevelopment Authority, and our Park and Recreation okay. Commission. And so those, um, the City of Council appoints uh, members of the community mm -hmm. to serve on those and they act in an advisory role to the okay. City Council. They typically meet um, once a month, although the Planning Commission meets every meets twice a month okay. because they hold public hearings oh, um, right. for the City right. Council and make recommendations on projects. So uh, we typically we solicit applications in November and December, and then we will hold interviews um, December or January, okay. depending on, on the Council schedule sure. and the number of, of applications that we get. Typically, we have very few openings available mm -hmm. because people want to continue to serve, right, which right. is a great problem to have. Oh, um, right. they, they put in a lot of time, and I think people, once they get to know their role and you know get to know um, how that board or commission functions and all the ordinances and rules surrounding it, they they really get comfortable and really can oh, kind of right. hit their stride, and so they like to continue to serve. Mm -hmm. So. But uh, you know, sometimes people move out of the city because oh, right. it is a requirement that you have to live in the, live in the city, or their family needs change or mm -hmm. their job changes, and so we'll see vacancies. And so um, we make those appointments um, in January, mm -hmm. and then if we do have a vacancy throughout the year, we will we always hold on to the applications and we'll make oh, an right. additional appointment right. here or there if necessary. But 
um, the board and committee members really serve a great function mm -hmm. in our in our community and, and really contribute. It's a great w way to volunteer. It's something that probably takes um, a little bit more time oh, right. and uh, consistency, whereas volunteering, you know, you can show up on a Saturday right. and plant flowers <laughs> or, or work at our bridal fair for right. a few hours right. and call it a day. So, you know, I think that's nice so that there's mm -hmm. kind of something for everybody, whether it's some kind of long-term commitment you want oh, or right. just, you know, right. spend a few hours you know, in a month or in throughout the year doing something. So it's, it's, I'm really glad that we have that opportunity for our residents. And then people, if they're kind of thinking about it, to find out more, they could go on the website and look up minutes, yep. which is not the most exciting thing, but <laughs> no, to find out what these different commissions do. Yep. yep. But they could also go to the meetings. Absolutely. Yep. They're all open to the public right. and we publish um, what night the meeting is held. And I, our planning commissions are also televised, so uh -huh. you can watch those. You oh, know, you right, have to show right, up. So right. um, it's it's really yeah. You can just come and sit in a meeting, read mm -hmm. the minutes. They're all online, and and just see what what it does if that's an interest to you. Right. And it's it's interesting. Oftentimes, we'll get somebody that um, maybe they're involved in real estate or planning, and they mm -hmm. want to serve on our planning commission. Sure. And that's great because they bring that knowledge. Mm -hmm. But sometimes the best board and commission members aren't involved in the industry. Uh -huh. Are just you know. Uh, mom or dad working in some other yeah. area that just want to give back to the community, right. they bring a whole other perspective right. because we have the experts there, our staff right. are experts. Yeah. Just to bring your average citizen perspective uh -huh. into a board or commission and, and get to know what the general community is thinking is a huge benefit to all of us. So I really like having those you know, that just want to serve right. or give back right. and don't really have um, an agenda right, or expertise right, in a certain right. area, it's really refreshing to kind of see those candidates come in and want to serve. Yeah, because I want to encourage people to think about it. Mm -hmm. And then if they find something that's interesting, then fill out an application and have it on file. That's right, yep. And then the, your volunteer coordinator coordinates the short-term kinds yes. of needs that the city has, right? Right. We have a city newsletter and um, Jackie Moss is our volunteer mm -hmm. coordinator and she puts um, volunteer opportunities uh -huh. out there, but I've had people call, there's a lot of students out there that are looking to right, <laughs> get their right, hours in right, or complete right, projects, right. Uh, whether it's for school or scouts or yeah. something like that. And so she's really good at finding something to do for a few uh -huh. hours. Or we have businesses that come forward and say, how can we make a big contribution to Plymouth? Uh -huh. What can we do? Right, and so we'll right. find some service projects sure. for them to sure. do. So, you know, you can volunteer for an hour once a year or you can volunteer, you know, for 10 hours every week, it's, right. you know, or even more. So it's really, our volunteer coordinator is great at mm -hmm. finding your interests and what you like to do and really fitting that in mm -hmm. to fill that need in the community. We have, you know, people um, at election time, oh, it's, right. it's quite busy, right. but you know, stuffing envelopes and, you know, counting housing aid uh -huh. applications and planting flowers and right. really getting out in the community and, and seeing all that all the services Plymouth mm -hmm. have. I think people really like to work at events too because oh, those, right, are, those right, are a lot of right. fun whether it's Fire Nice, right. Old Fashioned Christmas, um, our, um, any of the concerts uh -huh. that we have. People really like to get out. The, our Kids Carnival like to get right. out and kind of interact with, right. with our community and be a part of those. Well I want to thank you so yep. much. Thank you. We're happy to have Mayor Slavic with us so that we can learn more about her city and her issues and we hope if any of them kind of resonated with you that you follow up on it. We're glad that you've been with us and we'll look for you next week. Bye.